Okay, so uh, good morning from the other side of the Atlantic. So here is an afternoon. Uh, I am at uh, in Vienna, in Austria. And um, our first presenter will be Maristella uh, Feustel. Um, just a few words about Maristella. Oh, yes, you're uh, muted. Sorry, I, I was trying to let someone into the waiting room or from the waiting room and accidentally okay. the mute, but I hit the mute button for you, Ilias. So <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, so I was just starting um, reading the short bio of Maristella. Mm -hmm. So Maristella is the music special collections librarian at the University of North Texas. She's the co-chair of the Society of American Archivists Technical Subcommittee on Describing Archives, a Content Standard. And she's the immediate past chair of the Steering Committee for Texas Archival Resources Online. She administers two active grant projects. One is the Tim Owens Collection of Just Interviews, and the second one is the Binders Volumes Research Initiative funded by the Endowment, National Endowment for the Humanities. And I think she's gonna talk about it today. Uh, her research interests include just history, archival practice, and digital humanities projects. So Maristella, Thanks for being here, and the stage is yours. All right. Thanks so much. It's great to be with you this this morning and or afternoon. And so thought I'd start with a brief overview of music binders volumes. Uh, generally speaking, they're bound volumes of sheet music titles that were published separately but selected and arranged by an individual according to their, their own tastes and intentions. Uh, in the age of steam and before the era of recorded sound, this was like compiling a mixtape of tunes or a playlist on Spotify with, with tunes you like. So the, the compilation of binders volumes was particularly an activity for women, providing major insights into the social and cultural aspects of their everyday life. As such, the volumes are of interest for research because of the works they contain, which are often rather rare, but also as artifacts and, and for the sum of their components. <clears throat> they shed light on musical life outside the newspapers and concert hall in a broad spectrum of forms of social participation in music that Christopher Small called musicking, which could include performing, listening together or alone, learning, collecting, compiling, buy, buying, selling, trading, discussing music, uh, giving presentations about music and so on. So, so all of these potential angles for consideration and types of activity translate into a variety of potential research interests, but also a variety of descriptive challenges. Not only is the volume itself a mixtape of sorts, but the required approaches for preservation, discoverability, and access also call for a mixtape sort of approach, adopting relevant components of cataloging and archival approaches, digitization practices, and creating what we can't find elsewhere. So the goal of this activity is to uncover hidden or obscure collections of binders volumes and facilitate research by bringing together data and digital surrogates from these far-flung places, currently in, in the US, but we'd love to expand it to international sources in the future. And I'm uh, gonna drop a link to the the NEH grant, grant project page in, in the chat. So the project team is uh, myself, I'm, I'm the, uh, the principal in investigator and uh, the de deliverables of this grant live on University of North Texas systems. Uh, my co-principal investigator is Dr. Candace Bailey at North Carolina Central University. And she she was the one who really, really got this, this project going and uh, had the idea of you know, seeking grant funding to to enhance the discoverability and research potential of binders volumes. And Dr. Brian Anderson uh, is in the University of North Texas College of Music, and he did his dissertation on binders volumes and so was also heavily involved even you know, before the grant project in uh, 
in the the data side of of what what you can learn from from binders volumes. So as we're taking this on, we're mindful of of the need for our work to contribute to the field more broadly than a standalone project. We want to avoid reinventing the wheel when a lot of what we need is out there in some form. And we also want to avoid the situation of this classic XKCD comic where we simply create yet another standard. And even though we're we're not aiming for a, a universal standard like the cartoon, uh, we we want something that, that again, isn't an, an island unto itself. So, so the title of this presentation referred to multidimensional mixtapes, figuratively speaking. One additional mixtape-like dimension I already mentioned was the overall approach, and there are still others. One is the platform this project resides on, Omeka. We're using it because it's something that's already available to us and hosted by UNT libraries. It has a wide support network and, and a considerable knowledge base in its forums. Uh, importantly for our purposes, it also allows for direct access to edit experimentation and design decisions that are much more locked in on other U UNT websites. And above all, Omeka is highly extensible and customizable with uh, plugins and the ability to add prepackaged or or custom vocabularies. So over the past year, we started from our own internal wish list of data elements and first looked for an existing framework that might accommodate it. Omeka comes with a, f a few vocabularies preloaded, like Dublin Core, but I also loaded in and experimented with the Bib Frame ontology, the Performed Music ontology, and, and several others. Bib Frame came the closest, but another issue, along with wanting to structure particular kinds of data and not relegate them to notes fields, Omeka hasn't accommodated hierarchical structures well for us. So. We needed a flat hierarchy with custom components. Ontologies exist on a continuum of comprehensiveness and stability. For Dave Rogers, there are collaborative ontologies, which are stable and comprehensive. And then there are embedded ontologies, which are application-specific data structures, which is exactly what we needed in Omeka while remaining mindful at all times of the need to share and reuse the data that comes out of the project. So I've termed, I've termed our working ontology Kludge Core, referring to a kludge or kludge, uh, as the pronunciations vary, which for Merriam, the Merriam-Webster dictionary is a haphazard or makeshift, makeshift solution to a problem, and especially to a computer or programming problem. And the suffix core, because uh, there are a lot of metadata standards like PB Core and Dublin Core that that include include that. So Kludge Core itself is an ad hoc mixtape of a metadata structure. More on that shortly. So yet another mix mixtape like component is the incorporation of linked data. So Branching out to include linked data is a major component of, of the project that takes it above and beyond cataloging or digitization and metadata. Uh, the, the aim of this project is an, example, an active example of the slogan, the world enriched with library data, libraries enriched with the world's data, further facilitating research by connecting to content and context that provide a much fuller picture of binders volumes. Social networks and archival context, the SNAC project provides a wealth of contextual information in addition to being a discovery tool for related collections. While SNAC includes the option to incorporate Wikidata, we also include it separ separately for name disambiguation and for its own rich contextual information. We also use IIIF to link to digitized materials hosted in the UNT Digital Library, 
which keeps all of the items' respective metadata associated with them and links out to where they reside with all the features of our digital library. So linking to these two resources enhances the discoverability of accessible items, what exists, what's out there, and also it enhances the discoverability of context in terms not only of factual information, but also insights available from large aggregations of data. If you took cataloging, you may have heard these described as isness and aboutness. And in any case, both serve the fourth law of library science, which is my personal favorite, save the time of the reader. Of course, we face particular challenges in building something new. One is that we're really pushing the envelope with, with Omeka with extensions and even using using uh, Git bash shell scripts to extract information that, that an Omeka data dump doesn't provide. The data dump provides links to Omeka entities while we can use the scripts to write the contents of those links to a compiled file. Another challenge is that the advanced components are more labor intensive to add. We can import the information in a CSV import, but getting the URI to function as a URI or associating imported fields with controlled vocabularies we've added requires considerable last mile intervention. There's also the more seamless linked data presentation that would be nice versus what's currently possible. Right now, we, we really are designing for the, for the, the future as well as, as the present. So that we're, we're aggregating the data and it's possible to display it. Uh, we can provide links for people to follow, which still saves researchers time and broadens access to content and context. Uh, a slicker user interface is beyond the, the scope of the current project, but definitely something that we would love to see. And so our next steps are, of course, to finish producing the deliverables for this grant. Which is a pilot project and then seek a larger implementation grant to do a lot more of it and realize the full potential for the digitization and description of a large aggregation of binders volumes in the hundreds rather than rather than about 10 that we're starting with. And every step of the way, the goal is to facilitate research and hopefully have a more suitable infrastructure grow up alongside of it. Still, thankfully, we, we don't need a mountain of data to show the potential insights available to researchers. Uh, for one example, here here is a visualization of uh, of networks of co-publishers found in all, just one volume compiled by Eva Eve in the collections of Duke University. If you're familiar with sheet music of this era, you'll recognize the multiple co-publishers across geographical er areas that are listed in addition to the main publisher. So for example, you may have uh, Firth Pond and Company in New York and they're, they're co-publishing with uh, Oliver Ditson in Boston and then smaller cities, uh, uh, J. H. Hidley, I believe, is in is in Al is in Albany, New York, and uh, was also a surpri surprising hub of uh, of co publishing within this volume, so that you you get this hub and spoke model of of major publishers and then secondary publishers that expand geographical reach to places like Cincinnati. Um, Boston, of course, Philadelphia, uh, down to New Orleans, and in, in particular as a as a southern southern limit, St. Louis. So, so these organizational links made it possible to sell mute, sell more music in more places. And so, tracking these networks shows who the major hubs and spokes were in the distribution system as well as the geographical reach and limitations one would face in getting the music to market. So, so if your compiler is in, uh, you know, is some, somewhere in North, North Carolina or Georgia, yeah, that, that provides insights into what was reaching them and their, their access and mobility 
in terms of being able to to collect this this widely. And just as a an, another example of a you know in a socioeconomic aside, uh, one of one of the publishers in this network is the uh, W. C. Peters and Sons, who were the same Peters family that were involved in the in the early colonization of the Dallas Fort Worth area of Texas. So small small world, and uh, you know the things that the things that music publishing winds up. Helping, helping to fund it's uh you can see the 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 expanse of, of potential research research paths from from that alone and so this this graphic by the way was the uh, was done in in Gephi. so yeah one and then one other point to note here is that they even just from this this volume uh there are basically two two networks that that become become visible. You have it sort of a right hemisphere that's uh, dominated by Firth and Pond and J. H. Hidley, and then uh, the left hemisphere, which is smaller and dominated more by Oliver Ditson and uh, C. C. Clapp and Company. <clears throat> and so that gives an example of the you know the the, in, the insights available from structuring data and being you know, being able to to recall it. So, I'm going to pop out there and uh, go over to a site demonstration. So, I'm going to stop sharing this this screen briefly and. Find my find my windows for for my Microsoft Edge, so you can't see the ten thousand tabs I have open in Chrome. And uh, here we are. Okay, so again, there's the there's the tab with the yeah you know, with the the full full NEH information uh, if you're if you're interested, so so the the project so far, and we we have uh, about about eight months left in the project. So, as a summary, so far, you know, we started with our our wish list of data, and then you know made our our custom ontology, and got a, an initial iteration going with uh, two or three binders volumes and. Uh, the site you're seeing today is still iteration one. We're in the process of implementing iteration two, which will be the uh, the sort of fi final draft, uh, incorporating the changes and in input we got from from viewers at, at other presentations and our advisory board for for iteration one. And one of the things we we did differently was. Uh, Slightly revise the ontology to lean more on controlled vocabularies in in Omeka, and also just from from actual use, we were finding there were certain fields we thought we would need that we didn't, and so uh, so we're currently in the in the process of uh, Im implementing Kludge Core two. So, in any case, uh, this is the the landing page for the the sort of alpha site that we've uh, that we've been we've been building in o, in Omeka, and so from from there I'd like to pop over to the admin site, so you can see we we have other other projects going in our our Omeka instance, but the Music Binders volume pilot in in particular uh, runs on uh, the the item system within Omeka with uh, individual titles as as items, and then each volume corresponds to an to an item set. And uh, in terms of custom vocabularies, you can see here the uh, 
the the things I I incorporated to you know to look at options initially, and then uh, Kludge Core One again with the flat hierarchy by necessity had ninety ninety one properties uh, with controlled vocabularies for things like uh, title types and contributor types. We've uh, we've dropped that down to just the 62 properties and so all all of these with BVRI are are ours for contributor types and this this is the library of congress list with the addition of a few things like surmised composer and arranger and also con contributor of marginalia with marginalia being a being a, a major distinguishing feature that that makes makes the the binders volume un, unique and uh, often provides a, a lot of context. So so from there, and we've looked at the uh, you know the, the organizational links of publishers as as an example. Um, one other affordance of of Omeka is the ability to map locations. So the the dominant composer in or not the composer the dominant publisher in in these these co-published volumes would often include a street address and so in in spite of uh street street renumberings in you know in the 1850s in Philadelphia and the 1890s in New Orleans uh, we've uh, been able to compile the the physical context and space of uh, of where these the uh, where these publishers were, and so you 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 find you can retrace a, a physical music scene, uh, particularly in the case of our our binders volume from from Louis Berger, where you can really kind of reconstruct his stomping grounds in New York and and see where these were in. Uh, in low, lower Manhattan with uh, yeah, address level accuracy. Mer mercifully in, in New York, the, the street addresses have been remarkably stable so, so that it's possible to see, you know, this is associated with Louis Berger's Social Quadrille, which um, was published by Fir Firth and Son. And so this also shows the uh, the the data set that we're compiling, and again, right right now we we are developing for the present, but also for the for the future, um, to have to have data displayed in a you know hopefully some more polished in, interface to be to be determined. But in the meantime, we are able to link out to the snack cooperative. And so we can then access the the contextual information of, available about these publishers. And I'm also an active uh, snack snack editor. Uh, I, I see the the question in the chat. Um, to some extent, we're able to 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 map uh, to map provenance in that if if we're able to if we have a, a seller's stamp or for instance, um, if a, a street address is is given in in marginalia, that's something we would try to try to find and and plot. And so, let's see, and then so with within the collection, in in addition, this give uh, the metadata facets give give us a a way to say you know give give me everything you've got from 563 Broadway. And in this case, it's a, it's only, only one, but, you know, for instance, I can also say, give me all of your New York publications, which of, which of course is going to be a lot. And, uh, and so that brings back 63 examples from our, from our, our pilot volumes so far. 
And um, another another question I see I see in the chat. Um, yeah, sur surmised is uh, um, I that's that's a word I associate with uh, one particular men mentor, a former music cataloger here, and it's a uh, it really it really captures it well because it's like you you know who it is, but at the same time it's uh, you want to be transparent about the fact that it's not ev yeah, evidenced on the on the item. So so yeah yeah sur surmise is is a great word. And so let's see, just to, to hop to a couple specific examples. Uh, let's see, this is again from the, the Berger collection and this shows what uh, the IIIF, um, the IIIF interface allows us to do in, um, in having an, an interactive display of the individual pages. So, so that you could pop out to the to the UNT Digital Library where this lives with uh, you know all kinds of meta metadata, uh, but it's also an interactive within within the page. Um, so so that that's something we're we're actively working on um, the getting the triple IF manifest for for the individual files has been a has been a chore you know talking about you know the the more advanced functions being the most labor intensive and least uh, least compatible so far with with automation uh, but again well well worth it to have that that interactivity and again similarly this this is one where where we we don't have the full triple if manifest edited down because uh, part of the, the, ch the challenge is uh, ed editing the file down down to just the pages we need and then also uh, hosting the edited file which currently I'm I'm doing out of out of my own github and looking for a more more refined way to do that but then this is a good example of the the many co-publishers and and but we're what we're able to to capture there, and uh, in terms of exportability, one thing we've been mindful of, in in addition to you know having scripts to pull to pull content for reuse, is the the it the, it still winds up being a very very Mark friendly uh, and Mark informed uh, set of data, so that we're we're also keeping an eye on on reusability and of course uh, what we're able to, to export uh, via via the script we're also able to pull into open refine and then convert to whatever tabular data you would need as a as a csv for instance and uh you know, be able to slice and dice and and re reuse the data and then hopefully for some for some future future platform that will also make my migration that much easier so so with with that um i think we can we can op open it up to to other questions thanks maristella this means that you are done right with your presentation or yes yeah Okay. Yeah, we have enough time. So if anyone wants to raise also his her hand, we can do it also this way. I also see a question at the beginning, but I don't know if it's a question for you or it was a general question about the term Zamelband. Uh, maybe I can put it this way. Sure. Uh, is binder the the term, the, of, the official term used in cataloging or are also other words to describe this kind of materials, these mud binders. Yeah, and it's a, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, definitely not a, not a ho household term, but it's, um, I believe by, you know, by consensus, at least within the U.S., um, bind binders volume is the, is the, 
the accepted term for for this this kind of uh, of compilation. Okay, great. If anyone has any questions, can ask loudly. I can also ask one more question. Um, sure. If I understood correctly, um, so basically you are showing when it comes about network and representing a graph, you are showing the this network of uh, publishers, the co-publishers. Uh, do you also try to represent other kinds of relationships and networks based on these binders? Can we decipher also other types of relationships? Yes, and th this is where uh, linked data and particularly SNAC are are our, our best friend. Um, and so I'll, I'll pop over to SNAC again because uh, one one of the great uh, affordances of of SNAC is the fact that it it does where where people have provided them uh, SNAC does track uh, in interpersonal networks and relationships. So. For instance, if we have uh, something where the the source work is is by Rossini, uh, it's, it's a good example of a of a comprehensive snack record. So the uh, this work is already being done, and it's something we can contribute to and and link to. So so for uh, the context here, you get uh, you know lang language is used birth and death dates, um, pla places where he where he lived and, and stayed, and then also, you know, collab collaborators, and not only in a list, but you get a the, the first first degree connections here, and then it is possible to over overwhelm your browser, uh, but but there are options for second and third degree connections that you can see ma major collaborators and uh, a variety or variety of associations that are that are structured so um so for instance uh, if someone you know you can distinguish you know relatives from other associations like em employing um em em employee employer relation relationships uh and uh yeah, just to just to hit a couple more questions in the chat uh, for the the interactive viewing uh, the function that we're using within within Omeka is called the Universal Viewer, and so that's that's what's pulling in the 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 display that lets you go through page page by page. And so uh, these these are uh, in this in this case these are actually bound to to a spine uh, in the in the PowerPoint. To um, I'll hop back a couple pages there. Uh, I and mean, oftentimes these are you know very very you know loving lovingly and uh, you know carefully made as as keepsakes. Um, so let's see. Yeah. So uh, here, here's one from our collection that's shown some wear and tear, but it's, uh, yeah, they're they're good sized, usually about uh, inch and, an inch and a half thick, uh, literally bound bound volumes. So let's see. And uh, another another question. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, pub publisher names are are a challenge, and uh, I ran into this e even in just uh, in making that graph as as an example because you have a uh, yeah, and op open refine is definitely our friend here in terms of uh, making sure that you know yeah, you know, say for instance that. Uh, Oliver Ditson Ampersand Company is, you know, treated the same as Oliver Ditson and Company, and so uh, the other 
you know, a, the the other major complication with publishers is the fact that there are all of those successor organizations, mergers, acquisitions. And we saw like there's there's Firth and Pond, and then there's Firth Pond and Sons, and so uh, Snack is also uh, a great resource there in that they do track as you know being based in encoded archival context they they do track uh, corporate bodies and success successor organizations so that it's possible to 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 link those without without losing the distinction of various phases of the company where it's uh, you know just Oliver Ditson the guy and then it becomes Oliver Ditson and company and and so on so so that that is that gives us a, a working solution at least to the uh to the endless variations of uh of uh, publishers because it, that also pulls together variant names so Oliver Ditson versus O Ditson and uh and so it's yeah it's just a really great example of uh link links data be, being our friend for for providing structure and uh and name name disambiguation great since we're talking about bib frame maybe i will also ask a question i'm not working with bib frame uh, but coming from this music libraries world as far as i'm concerned we are we have lost in bib frame this idea of expression right that we have in ferber and uh, I just wanted your opinion on this. Uh, does it really uh, eliminating expression has an effect on how you describe music or by just, I don't know, you're representing a, a version of the work, maybe as another work or another instance. I don't know how exactly it is in big frame. If this makes a difference for you, what's your experience with these concepts? Thanks. And yeah, my you know my experience with with bib frame is uh, lar largely in in this context is as kind of a yeah a men a menu of of options and uh, and so I'm a, I'm more an archivist by trade than a than a cataloger, but I I think it's a it's something where pra practitioners like you know can come together in groups like the music OCLC users group, you know, music library association and the international association and, you know, as communities of practice and have, have that leverage together to say, you know, this, this is important. And we, you know, we, we use this and, and need it. So I don't, I don't have a lot of uh, direct, direct experience with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the issue of expression within bib frame and here uh here at north texas we we are still um still using mark mark cataloging with with rda so um but yeah it's the it's something where where we we definitely have to make ourselves heard for the particular needs of of music description i see yeah just my comment, I don't know, uh, also to you, Tim, uh, maybe I'm totally wrong here, and I don't want to yeah, to talk about this topic that much, but have any way works. I don't know if works are distinguished from expressions in Bib frame. That's my concept, my problem. Yeah, the, it's, it's generally speaking, the Bib frame work is closer to the the Ferber LRM expression, but it does have things f from the Ferber LRM work to be like subjects and in some cases creators. Um, but overall, I I wasn't there during the modeling discussions when Bibframe was created, but I think um, I think the idea was that at least in the American cataloging community, um, the work entity is the subject of authority cataloging and was outside of the scope of Bibframe. So I don't think any of C. Lorimer is here, but um, from Stanford, because it's a little early over there, but she usually can, she's usually the person who jumps in and, and, uh, and uh, kind of uh, 
it offers the expert uh, opinion, especially when it comes to music and bib frame um, on these matters. But yeah, in general, that's that's kind of um, uh, I think the two cent uh, on uh, kind of simplified version of the bib frame model is that its bib frame work is really closer to the Ferber LRM expression, although it does tend to have some things from the work as well, just for necessities purposes. Okay, I see. Thanks. Yeah. Do we have any other last questions? You always have also the possibility to uh, type your questions also in Slack. Maybe um, uh, there, Maricela can answer them later. Sure. There, there are some things in Slack that Christine has been publishing um, just about Ditz, Oliver Ditson that are kind of funny and interesting <laughs> um, about... Uh, Christine just realized that Oliver Ditson, publisher from this talk, is the one whose widow established a fund that supports contemporary music, including some really good festivals. Um, and I think somewhere there's maybe some, there are some links in there. So ditsonfund.org and the, I think something in Boston, uh, some, or BMOP. <laughs> Uh, Boston, the Boston Modern Orchestra Project. I think they also funded a uh, festival at Columbia. It's it's modern like orchestral music. Uh, it's just yeah. It was just really funny to see like oh Oliver Ditson, music publisher like in the Northeast, and it's it, it's just uh you know the like the Ditson Festival in two thousand eight that Modern Mo Modern Orchestra Project did was like I don't know like this really like it was it was like so immersive and like sort of life-changing for me. So uh, it's, this is just a tangential way of saying it's, it's interesting to see that these things have tendrils into like the modern world of music. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. And all of those links that we can, that we can structure, you know, I've uh, used a, a mixtape analogy throughout this, but I, the, you know, once we, we can structure those linkages and for discovery, it kind of, it also reminds me of, of the pipes and, in Super Mario Brothers, where you know all of these become a, a pipe you can jump down, and suddenly you're at you know music festivals in in the modern age. Yes, definitely, uh, fe festivals are also yeah mix mix tapes. And um, I think there's one more. We can squeeze in one more sure. question, and then we have to move on to the next session. Okay. And so, um, yeah, I, I see the the question on uh, again, you know, where where we're going with the uh, with linked data, and so, yeah, def definitely, I think it's uh, the the thing that that I keep coming back to is the uh, the need for for in infrastructure, and I think uh, in some in some ways the the profession is kind kind of waiting for for in infrastructure to appear to really get rolling with it, but it's, it's going to need to be uh, a more iterative process and hopefully projects like this, the, that show it in, show it in action and point to what could be help uh, move those iterations along of, uh, of what the, what the infrastructure can, can look like. And, uh, you know, and, and how it might be incorporated into, into, for instance, a, uh, yeah, li library catalog and, uh, you know, on online systems, so that that it's a that rolling sense of, uh, you know, proof of concept demonstration, and then see see what what gets adopted, in you know, as a matter of you know con consensus by practice. Mm 